Hi, everybody. I wanted to show you a quick example of how to do the Duma calculations for a lab. Um, it's derived from the ideal gas equation. Not that. Hold on. Um, so we went over the derivation in the lecture videos, if you want to review that. But it comes from PV equals NRT. And we end up getting to an equation where we can solve for the, we'll do it in pink. The molecular weight is going to be equal to the density of the gas. So the symbol for density is just a D times the ideal gas constant times the temperature and all of that divided by pressure. So now we want to remember that the ideal gas constant has units of liters, atmospheres, moles, Kelvin. Um, and so all of our numbers need to <clears throat> ultimately match those units, right? Now, so T in this instance is going to be from when you, you seal the flask. It's going to be hot. In my data table up here, and of course yours might look different, um, uh, it was sealed at 60.1 degrees Celsius. The P is going to be what we call barometric pressure. That's going to be measured at the beginning of the lab experiment. In the front of the room, we have a giant barometer. And the pressure at the time that you do the experiment will be written on the front board. Make sure you put that in your lab notebook. That's always going to measure torque because it's a barometer and Torricelli invented it to measure pressure, but it always gets uh, the unit is torque. So in order to convert it to atmospheres, we're going to have to use some dimensional analysis. Um, I guess we'll just do it now. It's fine. It doesn't matter when in the process, but you do want to show this using dimensional analysis or you risk losing points. Okay. And that's again, just demonstrating that we understand the units cancel off like that. This will be really close to one. I want to make sure to be careful of my significant digits. The measurement here has five. So my answer had better have five. And so I get 1.0013 ATMs. And of course, we didn't bother to convert the temperature. So we can probably just do that here. We're going to add 273.15 to get to Kelvin. And then I'm going to round to the tenths place because that's where our data is when we're adding and subtracting. It's always the place value for significant digits. So my calculator says 333.25, but actually it's going to be 0.3 because 0.25 rounds up. Okay. Now, so, so far, pretty simple. Um, to figure out the density of the gas, we are going to have to use the Duma method, all right? And so basically that's talked about, described and shown in your, in your lab videos, but essentially we're heating up our unknown to occupy an entire flask as the gas and then sealing the flask. And when you cool it down, the unknown will go back to being a liquid. When that happens, it leaves a vacuum behind. And if we break the flask open um, underwater, it'll suck in exactly the same volume of water that was once occupied by the gas. Measuring the volume of water with the Erlenmeyer flask is not very accurate, and that's what we have to use in this experiment, experiment because of the structure of the stoppers. So we're actually going to use the mass of the water to convert to the volume of the water. Now we're going to use density of the water to do that. So this cold water temperature up here um, is going to give us the right temperature to find the density of water. And so you can use any website you want as long as you cite the resource. Um, and it's got to either match what you measured that cold water at. It might also be room temperature water, depending on your instructor. But the water, when you broke the flask open, um, 
well, you're breaking just the end of the flask, not the entire thing. But anyways, you need the temperature at exactly your temperature of water. Well, you need the density rather at exactly the temperature you have. And so I just found, for example, this website um, that references the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics. It's very reputable. It's a really big book. We have several copies in the lab if you'd rather use a physical book. Um, oh, but this one only goes down to 15, so that's not going to work. Never mind. Let's find another one. Whichever website you choose or whichever book you choose, you want to make sure to cite your source. All right, so here's another resource. This one starts at zero. If yours went below negative zero, uh, below <laughs> negative zero is not a thing. Uh, if it goes below zero, like in the negative numbers, you're gonna need a different data table, but if it doesn't, in this one it's 0.5, so we can use it. All right, and so the way to use these kind of charts is if you're exactly zero, so this y-axis, if you're at exactly zero, that's your density right here, okay? We're at 0.5, so our density is going to be 0.999872. So essentially whole numbers on the left, decimal places on the right. So if I was at like 2.5, let's say, I would pick this number. Okay, that's just this particular one. You might find a different resource um, somewhere, but you need to find the density of the water to do this calculation. So the density at 0.5 for the water um, is 0 0.999, I think it was 872. Oh. And that unit is grams per milliliter, our standard unit for, for the density of a liquid. So <clears throat> now I have to figure out what the mass of my water was. This comes from the data table. So we have the mass of the gas and the flask. We also have a mask of the flask full of water. That's the one I want to use here. Okay, so I'm going to take the flask plus the water. Your actual data is only going to have two decimal points here because you have to use the balance on your bench for that because it's too heavy for our analytical balances. Your empty weight will have all four significant digits because you'll use the balances in the instrument room for that. Okay, so this will give me the mass of the water that was sucked in after um, after I broke the capillary. So I got 264.7724 grams of water. And now I can use the density to cancel the grams. Again, you guys are wanting to show this not as dimensional analysis because you learned density as some kind of a formula um, in your high school experience, but it's not a formula, it's a conversion factor. So make sure, oh, see, I did it wrong there because grams does not cancel, see? So you gotta make sure that you're showing the dimensional analysis so you don't lose points over silly things. And the reason you do that is to keep from making that exact mistake I just demonstrated. There we go. Now, oops, that's in the wrong spot. Now our grams is gonna cancel out and we end up with milliliters, right? So I'm actually dividing by 0.99872. And it doesn't change it dramatically, but you're gonna find when you do these calculations that small changes in these numbers make a really big difference. So don't skip this step. And I have seven figures. So we're gonna go back out to the same position. My calculator says 0 0.806295. So I'm gonna round 0 0.8063. I'm not actually rounding um, in the middle of the calculation. I just round what I write because I keep referencing in the calculator throughout the question. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up and use the whole number when I actually do the next step. Okay, so that's the volume of a gas. I also need to convert it into liters because we don't typically do density of gases in milliliters. 
it's too small. And I want to show the dimensional analysis for that as well. And we get so many significant figures because this data was very carefully measured. All right, that's our that's our volume of the water, which is also the volume of the gas. That's going to go as the denominator here because density is mass divided by volume. And that's in liters. To get to the density of the gas, I also need to know the mass of the gas, which I'm going to find using this number. So the mass of the gas is just the weight when you seal it. This is again going to be measured in the instrument room minus your initial weight. It's not going to be a huge change because gases are not that heavy. Um, but that would give us the mass of gas that we sealed into our flasks. If you don't use the analytical balances in the instrument room, you are unlikely to be able to measure this. It's not a very big change. You don't get very many significant figures if you use the ones on your bench for those measurements. Happen to end up with two zeros at the end. That's just coincidence. Okay, so I'm going to take these two numbers and Divide. Okay, I get 1.09528032424. Um, I'm only going to keep four of those. And my unit will be grams per liter. So that's the first calculation. All right, now we know what the density of the gas is. So then I will plug it into my formula. And I, from there, I can calculate the molar mass. The reason we're doing the molar mass is because it tells us the identity of the material. And we want to use this temperature up here from um, when it was sealed because that's when the material was a gas. Not the temperature of the water, okay? Well, it is a temperature of water, but it's a temperature of hot water. So the boiling water when you seal it. And our pressure is going to be the barometric pressure. Now I wanna warn you, if you do this and you calculate less than 2.02, .02, um, you've done something wrong because the lightest gas in existence is hydrogen gas, which has a mass of 2.02 .02 grams per mole. Um, we don't have hydrogen gas because it doesn't liquefy at room temperature. So it's definitely not that. It should be something heavier. It, so if you got stuck with a real low number, make sure you come and talk to your, to your lab instructor and see what went wrong got four, so I'm going to round, it's 29.91767 in my calculator, so I'm going to round 29.92. And our units are going to end up being, let's see, atmospheres is going to cancel, liters is going to cancel, Kelvin cancels. And so if we set this up correctly, we end up with grams per mole remaining. Okay. Now, the next part of it is going to tell you to make a correction for the presence of air in the flask at the beginning. For this, you need to know what the room temperature was on the day that you were doing this measurement. It's typically around 20 or 21 Celsius. And then you need to look up on another website. Don't forget to sort uh, to cite it and find out what the density of air was at whatever temperature you measure, the air temperature, whatever temperature you have that day. Um, you're gonna find all kinds of goofy units cause lots of different engineering projects essentially need the density of air in different units. But if you search specifically for grams per liter, it will be less confusing for you. Um,
or you can actually do unit conversions if you'd like. Uh, I'll tell you that kilogram per meter cubed, which is a very common unit for the density of air, ends up being the same thing as gram per liter if you cor convert it correctly. So I could just use this uh, at 20 Celsius. I get 1.2041 is the density of air. Okay. Again, citing your source in your lab report. That's in grams per liter or kilograms per meter cubed, same thing. And so we can use the volume that we figured out to figure out how much mass of air was present in the beginning. So we have always ignored this fact, but the difference between this experiment and prior ones is that we push that air out during the course of the experiment, which means it's not there when you measure it at the end. So altogether in this particular example, we have that many grams of air at the beginning. So all I'm gonna do is go back to our original empty weight up here and subtract the amount of air that was in the container when I measured it. This will give me a lower mass. And this is just the weight of the glass itself so we're getting a more accurate depiction of what we are measuring at the end by doing it this way. And it's 65855, but I'm gonna round because of my significant digits here. So I'll go back through and do the entire calculation all over again. And what we're gonna find is you get a higher density. So you will also have a higher molecular weight um, that's because we have subtracted out the amount of air from the very beginning, right? So that's what they mean when they say do the calculation for, when correcting for air. It's talking about right in the beginning of the experiment, right? So you can see the density is going to be higher because my mass of gas is higher, 264.7724 versus 265.0912. So then you'll plug it back into density and recalculate everything. So in the end, you end up with two molar masses and you should discuss which one is more accurate. Uh, for my students, if you do these calculations and come show them to me, have them checked out, I'll tell you what the identity of your unknown is. So then you can for sure know how accurate your data is because I'll tell you what it is and you can calculate a molar mass from that. So it makes it easier to write your conclusion, but it means you have to do the calculations ahead of time. Um, so if you have questions, make sure you come to office hours, you're talking to your lab teachers or me or both or, or tutors.